In this episode, we're going to talk about why you should stop trying to buy your dream home. This is the Real Estate Money and Marriage Podcast. I'm Darren. And I'm Catherine. Catherine. And one of the last episodes, we talked about maybe you need to stop worrying about if your first home or even if your next home is your dream home because these big, soulless, heartless Wall Street investor banks like BlackRock don't care what the home is or how it makes them feel. They just want to buy a home with the piles of cash that they're sitting on. And something that I've been thinking about is what if instead of trying to find your dream home, which is, that's a lot of pressure for a home. Yes. You know, like you're, you're putting a lot of pressure on that thing. What if instead you found something or you could make something about that home, you, the dream, a dream thing. So a home is broken up into rooms and segments. You have a garage and you have an office and you have a kitchen and you have a bedroom and living room and dining room and all these different places. So what if instead of, this is my dream home, what if you just got a home and go, this is my dream garage, this is my dream office? Yeah. Or like what we were talking about just yesterday, I think it was yesterday, is our first home that we bought together was not a nice home or not a big home, but we'd wake up in the morning and we'd look out our window of our bedroom and we'd see like a green belt. Yeah. And that was nice. It was nice. It was like, all right, let's focus on this. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like our happy place. And let's kind of like imagine that one day our dream home has a similar or better view. Mm -hmm. Um, In more than just one room. Yeah. Because if we were to go to a different bedroom, we would see our neighbor's Neighbor's, house and another neighbor and another neighbor and another another neighbor but that one piece like i i just think what if you could just take something and go let me build off of this instead of well it doesn't have this so therefore it's a deal breaker and you're allowed to have deal breakers i think and also I th- again, I'm going to blame HGTV stuff on this. I, and um, as I flip through like IG reels, there's some stunning homes on there. Like I used to watch a show when I was younger called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Have you ever even heard of that show? Um, No, but I, someone had a song called that. Maybe. They're always complaining. Lifestyles. Mm-hmm. Is that like some 41 or something? Yeah. Was it? I think so. All right. Well, someone fact check us on that. Robin Leach, this English guy, would host the show and he would go to extravagant things. It'd be so interesting to find clips of that because it, I think if we saw that, we'd be like, that's not that impressive anymore. I see that on my Instagram feed every day. All the time. Mm-hmm. But was, and you can find a home like that in Texas for $450,000. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think a dream home has turned into a fantasy home. And I think it's really like, don't confuse those. Don't get those twisted. A fantasy home of, oh, this thing is on 12 acres and it has three different golf course holes on it. It has a theater that seats 44 people in the basement and just like these ridiculous over the top things that's a fantasy and uh, identify really what is a dream home and then i'm saying even take that back further like what would be your dream kitchen not a fantasy kitchen of oh i i wish joanna gaines would come and do it for me of like maybe it's what would make your sister-in-law envious if she came over for Thanksgiving and saw? Like, wouldn't that be enough? 
what if what would make your brother in law uh, envious if he saw you in your garage? Yeah, which seems like a kind of unhealthy attitude, but I also think it's unhealthy to yeah keep putting off home buying because you're oh for sure not getting your dream your fantasy home. Yeah, you shouldn't put off home buying because you want your fantasy home. Um, and the other thing to think about with these fantasy homes, I see them on my Instagram feed too, and they're in like these beautiful kitchens. And I'm like, dang it kind of makes me feel bad for a second that our kitchen is like nice but like pretty basic like nothing about it is really extravagant but um if you get a kitchen like that they're always empty or they're staged and they're perfectly clean Mm -hmm. I mean if you clutter it up like live in it for a week or even three days like it's not gonna look like that it's not gonna look as nice and then one step further if you live in it for three years um you'll stain the countertops with something and um and something will look a little dated something will look just so 2023 and you'll want to redo it again and you'll look on your instagram feed and you'll see a nicer prettier kitchen so yeah i mean it's just like instagram in general you you have to take it with a grain of salt and you have to just Accept reality and be grateful for what you can afford. I just think it's interesting. There, there's a quite a bit, I think, bashing of this idea of the American dream. A lot of people were told, like all of us have been told over the last decade or a little bit more, that the American dream, buying the house, is not should not be the American dream anymore. It was like, yes, yeah, you should still go to college. Yes, you should still get a job at a corporation and do matching 401k, but don't worry about getting married and don't worry about buying a house. Those things aren't that important. You can kick those cans down the road and do those at any point in time. And the American dream isn't that that important. Stay flexible. Don't get tied down by marriage or homes because then you have freedom to just keep moving around and go get the next best job. What if? What if the problem with that idea was that followed like having a dream home? If you can't get the American dream, you you can't have the American dream unless you have the dream home. And I think that's where things got twisted. Mm -hmm. No, the American dream was having a home, not having a dream home. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess it, Again, I think we just need to be super stoked that, like, respect and appreciate how cool it is just to own a home. Just that, like, hey, there's some cool things just with owning a home, regardless of what your kitchen looks like, regardless of who you're making jealous or if you're achieving a dream. Like, you've most likely locked in an interest rate that's for 30 years. And then if rates go down further, you you get to decide to refinance. Um, you get to pay down your loan amount. You've at least locked in your principal and interest, assuming it's a fixed rate. It, it's just a pretty cool arrangement that has made many people wealthy. Um, and so I think we just need to get back to appreciating that. and using that as a tool to our advantage. And and I guess that's where if you can commit to that, then that's where you can start to carve out some ideas of it that are your dream of, because if you're renting a house, even if it's a three car garage, you're probably not going to invest into making it your dream garage. But now that you have this garage, like, where do you want to start at? What do you want to do that would make it a dream garage for you? Because you're committed to this thing now. And you can always trade up. I think the sooner you buy any home, the sooner you get to buy your dream home. It's not in the cards for everyone. It's not a guarantee. It's not something we're entitled to. But um, if you buy a starter home, 
young and early and you're strategic about the next steps, then you probably can get your dream home at some point. My last thought is don't get the dream home twisted with the American dream. Start where you can start. Last thoughts for you? Couldn't have said it better. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Money and Marriage Podcast with Catherine and Darren. And when you're ready, here's four things that you can do right now. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to this show, whether you're watching or listening. If you're watching, you can also click the like button, click the thumbs up button. Number two, if you're a first time homebuyer, get a free guide, seven costly mistakes homebuyers make. Visit costlymistakeshomebuyersmake.com. Number three, if you're selling your home, get access to our Get Sell Ready Guide and checklist. It'll show you how to get your home ready without spending a fortune or wasting your nights and weekends updating and remodeling your home. Visit GetSellReady.com. And number four, start a smart moves conversation with us. Get clarity about what to do next, get your questions answered, your concerns taken care of, and an action plan customized to your timeline. You can schedule a call with us at SmartMovesCall.com or start a chat with us. Visit M.me slash group.